Okay, so in this video, we will integrate the following rational function using, of course, the method of partial fractions. Now, as the degree of our numerator is strictly smaller than the degree of our denominator, we do not have to perform long division, and so we can jump straight ahead to factoring our denominator completely, but both terms have a factor of x cubed, so this will be a very simple factorization. So, let's now ignore the integral for now, and consider the rational function, which we're going to try and, as always, decompose as a sum of partial fractions. So we have 5x to the 4 minus 2x cubed plus x minus 1 over, and now we factor the x cubed, which will leave us with a, an x squared plus 2 factor. Now x squared plus 2 is an irreducible quadratic. x cubed is, well, a cubic power of a linear term. So this is fully factored. And now we can write the partial fraction decomposition. The exponent here is 3. Here, well, it's 1. So we'll have 3 plus 1, 4 partial fractions. So for x cubed, we'll get, as always, x, x squared, up to x cubed. And for x squared plus 2, simply x squared plus 2. Now for the numerator, well, for these three numerators, they are originating from, and now again, we ignore the exponent, the linear factor x. So each numerator in the first three cases has to be a constant. But the final partial fraction originates from an irreducible quadratic factor. Therefore, its numerator is not a constant, but a linear polynomial. It could end up, in the end, being a constant, but we do not know this ahead of time. So we'll go with dx plus e. As I've just said, d could be 0. So yes, we could end up with a single constant, but as we do not know this ahead of time, we have to go with the general form. As always, we have now an equality between two rational functions. We want to obtain an equality between polynomials. And so we multiply both sides of the equality by our denominator. So on the left, this leaves us with the numerator of 5x to the 4 minus 2x cubed plus x minus 1, which will equal on the right a times, well, this over x will leave us with x squared times x squared plus 2. Plus b, this divided by x squared will leave us with x times x squared plus 2. Plus c times, this over x cubed will leave us simply with x squared plus 2. plus dx plus e times this over x squared plus 2, which will leave us with x cubed. Okay, so as always, we try and use our first method in solving for the coefficients by choosing a value of x that makes every coefficient 0 but 1. And if you look here, the only value that will work is x equals 0 as this is an irreducible quadratic factor, it cannot be made 0 with an appropriate real value of x. So, we'll only obtain with this method one coefficient, but we'll take it. So if you plug in x equals 0, on the left you get negative 1. On the right, these three terms will vanish, and this will leave us with 0 plus 2, 2, c. And if you, of course, divide both sides by 2, c is simply negative 1 half. So 1 down, 4 to go. Now we use our second method by, again, multiplying out everything here 
and combining the constant terms, the multiples of x, and so forth together, therefore rewriting this polynomial in canonical form. Now here, these are pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to actually expand the whole thing. I will pull out the coefficients one at a time, and I'll write them here. So we have our constant term, which I will write as x to the 0, as x to the 0 is 1. So constant terms. Well here everything is multiplied by x squared, no constant term. Here everything is multiplied by x, no constant term. 2c is one constant term. And here everything is multiplied by x cubed, no constant term. So the only constant term we have is 2c. What about multiples of x, x to the 1. Well here there are none again as everything is multiplied by x squared. Here we have 1, right? We'll have 2b times x, so 2b. Here no multiple of x, it's either a constant or a multiple of x squared. Everything here is multiplied by x cubed, no multiple of x. So all we have is 2b. Let's keep going multiple of x squared. Well, we'll have 1 here, 2ax squared, so 2a. Multiple of x squared here, no, we'll have an x cubed and a multiple of x, so no multiple of x squared. cx squared, so plus c. Multiple of x squared here, none, we have an x to the 4 and an x cubed. So that's all we have. Multiple of x cubed, an x to the 4 and x squared, no x cubed. Here, a bx cubed, so plus b. Here, no multiple of x cubed. Here, a single 1, e times x cubed, so plus e. And finally, the largest power of x, x to the 4. Well, we have a times x to the 4, so plus a. No x to the 4, no x to the 4. Here, dx times x cubed, dx to the 4. So plus d. So on the right, we have the coefficients of x to the 0, the constant terms, the multiple of x, the multiple of x squared, the multiple of x cubed, and the multiple of x to the 4. But both polynomials are equal as polynomials, so they must have all the same coefficients. So our constant term on the right must equal the constant term on the left, which is negative 1. The multiple of x on the right, 2b, must equal the multiple of x on the left, which is positive 1. The multiple of x squared on the right must equal the multiple of x squared on the left. Well, if there is no x squared term, the multiple is obviously 0. The multiple of x cubed on the right equals the multiple of x cubed on the left, negative 2 and the multiple of x to the 4 on the right must equal the multiple of x to the 4 on the left. And now with these equations we can solve for all the remaining coefficients. And you can see the first equation returns what we previously had found. Divide by 2, c is negative 1 half. This we already know. Well here this is quite easy. Divide by 2, b is positive 1 half. Then what? Well, if you look at this equation, c is no longer an unknown. We know that c is negative 1 half, so let's replace. We have 2a. Negative 1 half is equal to 0. So add 1 half on both sides. So 2a will be 1 half. Divide by 2, so a is 1 quarter. Here we have b plus e is negative 2. Well, we know b, so we can easily solve for e. Let's replace b by 1 half, so we have 1 half plus e equals negative 2. Subtract 1 half on both sides, and you get that e is negative 2, negative 1 half, but negative 2 is negative 4 over 2, 
minus 1, negative 5. So e is negative 5 over 2. So we have a, b, c, e, we're missing d. Well, as we know a, we can replace a by a quarter and solve for d. So if we subtract a on both sides, d will be 5 minus a. And a is a quarter. And of course, 5 is 20 over 4. And 20 minus 1 is 19. So we get 19 over 4 is the value of d. And now we have all of our five coefficients. a is a quarter, b is a half, c is negative a half, d is 19 quarters, and e is negative 5 half. So we can go back now and try to find the integral. Again, if we call the original integral i, instead of integrating, as always, the initial rational function, we will integrate instead its partial fraction decomposition. So let's replace now. So i is equal to the integral of... Well, the first term was what? So we have abc over x, x squared, x cubed. Let's keep that in mind. So a is a quarter. So a quarter over x plus b, which was over x squared, so plus a half over x squared plus c over x cubed, negative one half over x cubed, then plus the last partial fraction dx plus e, so 19 quarters x minus 5 half, over x squared plus 4, x squared plus 2, sorry, our irreducible quadratic, and this is of course with respect to x. So before we integrate this directly, let's do three things. Let's rewrite the 1 over x squared and 1 over x cubed as an x to the negative 2, x to the negative 3, and here we should recognize this being two of our special integrals. If we split them up, this is our first special integral, and this will be our second special integral. So we'll do all of this at once, and then we'll be able to integrate. So we have here a quarter over x, we leave it as is, plus 1 half times x to the negative 2, minus 1 half times x to the negative 3, plus, so we'll split this up as to 19 quarters x over x squared plus 2, minus 5 half over x squared plus 2, and at the same time I will factor my scalar multiples. So I will have 19 quarters times x over x squared plus 2, minus 5 half, and if I of course factor 5 half, I'm left with a 1 on the numerator, so therefore 1 times x squared plus 2, and as this is our second special integral, I will rewrite 2 as the square root of 2 squared. So in this case, k is root of 2. And now we're ready to integrate. So here, pulling a quarter gives you a quarter, and the integral, of course, of 1 over x is the ln of x in absolute value, plus 1 half power rule here, so times x to the negative 1 over negative 1, minus 1 half, power rule again, add 1 x to the negative 2 over negative 2, these are of course multiplied, plus 19 quarters, times the integral of x over x squared plus 2, this of course is a half the ln of x squared plus 2, And here, if you wish, you can drop the absolute value, as x squared plus 2 is always strictly positive. Or, of course, you can keep them as well. It doesn't matter. 
minus 5 over 2 times now we integrate our second special integral 1 over x squared plus k squared and if you recall this is 1 over k so 1 over root of 2 times the arctangent of x over k x over root of 2 and in the end we of course add plus c Woo, close call now let's just simplify and clean this up a little bit a quarter ln of x, a quarter ln of x, and of course absolute value. This is simply negative 1 over x, so this will give you negative 1 over 2x. Negative, negative will cancel, so positive 1 over 4, and if you send this term down it will become a positive x squared, so you get positive 1 over 4x squared, 19 quarters times a half is 19 over 8, So ln of x squared plus 2. Here we could leave this as 5 over 2 root of 2. Or if you want we can rationalize. Multiply by root of 2 top and bottom. So you have on top negative 5 root of 2. And root 2 times root 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So you get negative 5 quarters of root 2. Times the arctangent and here again you could rationalize, you could write this as if you do root 2 over root 2 x root 2 over 2 but I'll leave it as is x over root 2 and plus of course c and so we're done and you can agree that this is again a highly non-trivial answer but if you go back to the original problem the integral up 5x to the 4 minus 2x cubed plus x plus 1 over x to the 5 plus 2x cubed using the method of partial fractions and this was a bit of work we arrive at a final answer of a quarter ln of x in absolute value minus 1 over 2x plus 1 over 4x squared plus 19 over 8 ln of x squared plus 2 in absolute value minus 5 root 2 over 4 arctangent of x over root 2 plus c a non-trivial but a rather elegant answer. And that's it.